This is an interesting real-life example. Um, this is using Crystal, and this is a customer who every month wants to run their paid invoices. Now, we have to understand this particular customer enters vouchers and within three or four days pays every voucher they've entered. They really don't use their payment terms. So what that means is, to all intents and purposes, a vouchering operation means they've paid it. But what they want is every week or every month to be able to run a listing of all of the vouchers that they've paid. But more important, if that voucher was distributed to multiple departments, they have multiple departments in multiple stores, if that voucher was distributed to multiple departments, they want the, the payments, i.e. the portions of the voucher, to be shown according to department. So this particular code here, what it does is it takes a distribution date, so we can select on distribution date. It takes the voucher number and the vendor number and the vendor name and invoice number and distribution amount. Now that distribution amount is what will happen is if we take a $100 vendor invoice and split it 80-20 between two distribution um, GL codes, we will have a record in here for the $20 and a record in here for the $80. And they will be treated separately because they will be sorted according to the account number. And so what we did here was we grouped these by the, um, by the vendor number, and then within the vendor number, we grouped them by the account number. And so this particular quick report shows us this setup in that we have multiple pages. We have, I think, three pages up here. Yeah, we have three pages. And if we go back, we can see here's one. This is for um, one particular account number, 5070. We have a particular vendor. If we go one, one more page back, we have um, Redline Freight, one invoice. I haven't got much data in here, and another vendor here. And we're getting vendor totals and then a department total for the account number 5010. Again, this is data that's automatically produced by PBS, but which is now being reformulated, reprinted, resorted, and filtered in a fashion that the PBS reporting doesn't have. It doesn't have the capability of producing this kind of data in this kind of a fashion. And indeed, with the neatness, that is, when I rerun this, if I come up here and I say I want to rerun this, I can say prompt for new parameters. And start date, okay, that looks okay. End date, that looks okay. Location, uh, that's okay. But I can put in each and every one of those. And in the case of the dates, if I draw down, I've got your standard kind of date function. So all that's rather nice setup that goes into this. I do that, and it's going to refresh the data. In addition, in the case of Crystal, and I'm not selling this. I just want you to see how this stuff can kind of works. I can break out any one of the accounts into its various components over here and double click and open up a new tab and see the data that went into that. So in effect, with Crystal, I have a drill down. And then the final point with these kinds of report writers, and Crystal is not unique, but it is good in this area. I can do an export, and I can take the same data, send it out to a PDF, or I can send it out to an Excel spreadsheet. So this data, having been printed, I could actually just as easily send out and put it in a spreadsheet. Again, all of this is on top of these ODBC infrastructures, whether they're SQL or whether they are XDBC. And in point of fact, um, just to kind of pull back the... Uh, pull back the screen in, a, in an Oz kind of fashion and let Dorothy see what's going on here. Although I've given you so far something like six examples, three of those have been with XDBC and three of those have been SQL. It doesn't really matter. From our point of view, although we're selling SQL because it's a more general database, it's broader based and it allows certain aspects of access that are better, and it's certainly, if you want to get into programming and do updates, it's really the only way to go. For all those reasons, it's certainly a worthwhile thing to consider. The fact is, the XDBC functionality, if you're looking at a single user system, looks very similar and functions in a very, very, very similar fashion. So there is a choice there on the back-end infrastructure which you can choose based on requirements. Okay, so that's your first kind of introduction to Crystal. And you've seen then, um, we, we've seen these, these uh, formula fields. So for example, here in the GL code, 
what I'm doing here to make it pretty. I know this particular customer has a four character four character main account and a two character sub account. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new field called GL code which is takes the number value left hand four digits of the and converts it to text then takes the left hand four value the four four digits so that I have the four digits of the account number appends a dash and then takes the left hand two digits of the sub account so I end up with something that looks like this.